Hi guys, and welcome to the Ace Tanker for the OI Experimental, the Tier 5 Japanese Super Heavy Tank. Um, yeah, I'd love to give you a lot of history about this tank, but very little history is known, uh, other than what Wargaming have released. Uh, there are very few sources outside of Wargaming regarding any of the super heavy Japanese tanks that were added, uh, and the OI Experimental is the first of those. Um, the OI, there is a little bit of information out there about the Tier 6, um, that it was built by Mitsubishi, that it was named after the, uh, between, the, it was named after the guy who proposed it and the Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi Company it was actually called the Mito, uh, but in game it's called the OI. Um, and this is the OI Experimental, of which there is absolutely no information whatsoever. And as I say, even of the OI, the tier 6 that uh, this tank is supposedly a, a prototype for, um, very, very little information is known. Um, other than the fact, it is an absolute monster where the concept was drawn up in 1939. After the Russian-Japanese conflict of 1939, uh, Japanese tanks just couldn't perform against their Russian counterparts. So as a result, they came up with a concept for a heavier tank, um, which became the OI. That concept called for a tank that had a lot of armor. Uh, this tank actually doesn't, even though it looks like it has a lot of armor, it doesn't. Uh, it's only got about 75 millimeters of armor, 70 to 75 millimeters of armor all around. So you can angle, you can side scrape, but there are lots and lots of tanks that are going to be able to go through this, especially higher tier tanks. I'm a tier 5 and a tier 6 game here, so plenty of tanks that are going to be able to pen me. Um, but the heavy tank concept, it was a super heavy tank. It had a crew of 11. Uh, yeah, so in-game I believe the crew is six, but uh, in real life, I suppose, if this tank did exist, again, the information is very, very sketchy, uh, it was supposed to have a crew of 11. Um, it had multiple turrets, uh, it had a 105 millimeter gun uh, as its main armament, and that was absolutely huge, huge, huge gun for a tank at the time this uh, tank was built, which was 1940. So this would have been able to compete with anything, any other tank on the battlefield had this tank actually been developed. Uh, it had multiple smaller turrets. These smaller turrets on front actually had 75 millimeter guns. So this was a bit like, you know, a 105 millimeter gun on the main turret with two Sherman turrets uh, strapped to the front of the tank using 75 millimeter guns. So a crew of 11. Um, and this is the experimental version of that tank. So uh, yeah, there's not a lot of information about it. Um, in game, it does actually get the 105 millimeter gun, uh, which is huge for a tier five. As a result, the damage is huge for a tier five. 300 damage and the penetration isn't terrible. It's not great. Uh, if you get it into tier six, tier seven games, unfortunately, the penetration is going to lack but the alpha damage is very very nice uh, and the premium ammo is not that much better 150 millimeters of penetration so you get 20 extra millimeters of penetration with the apcr 300 damage so um yeah this tank it lacks the armor is going to lack at higher tiers uh the gun and its penetration is going to lack at higher tiers or does lack um and when it, this tank is top tier it can be an absolute monster but anyway this is the first ace in the tank we're going to go uh, we are here on uh, Highway, uh, Tier 6 game, lots of Tier 6, about half the enemy team are Tier 6s, and there are three RT in play, and RT really don't like OI experimentals, so I'm expecting to get focused by RT, but uh, I'm going to take my heavy tank into town, like uh, most heavy tanks should, unless you've got l too many heavy tanks, in which case some should go north, but... Um, I'm rolling down here, I've got a couple of KV-1s in support, I've got a KV-2 in support, and we seem to have a few tanks going north, so it's looking okay. You can see we're doing 17 kilometers an hour. This tank, actually, the thing that really, really surprised me about the OI Experimental was just how quick, even with the stock engine, and the acceleration doesn't seem to be too bad. The uh, top speed doesn't seem to be too bad. The traverse speed doesn't seem to be too bad. Uh, upgrading the engine, I really didn't notice that much of a difference. The engine was very expensive. It took about 20,000 XP to unlock the uh, second engine for it. I ground out this tank with the uh, with the stock engine. When I put the second engine on it, I didn't really notice that much of a difference, but uh, we're finally in town. Cromwell B has advanced, so he's focusing on the Covenanter, so we aim. So big aim time and the accuracy is very, very derpy, but uh, we've done our first damage, low roll of 281. 
So I'm side scraping, I'm expecting to get focused by RT. I think it's about this time I realize, oh, hang on, there's three RT on the enemy team, I better get into cover. And the Cromwell B uses that opportunity to get out of there, but takes another hit along the way. But um, even though I'm a tier 5 and a tier 6 game, I'm expecting, well, I'm hoping to be uh, very, very aggressive. I'm going to be a bully here, don't want to ram the Covenanter, but okay, KB85 here. And he goes for the easy kill on the Covenanter, and he's in cover, so I've got nothing to shoot at. So I try to get into cover, but get take a hit from an A43. So this tank is just so big, so cumbersome. It's very, very hard to get this tank into cover sometimes. So um, I'm not thinking, uh, I'm thinking to myself, maybe the enemy team haven't sent too many tanks into town. There doesn't seem to be anyone on this corner. Uh, we're down two tanks, enemy team haven't lost any tanks yet, so we're already losing. KV-85, KV-2, Type 95. Now I'm looking at the Type 95 and I'm thinking, oh, this guy, I can potentially shoot him and ram him. So, going to flank, just advancing. You can see we're doing 40 kilometers an hour. KV-1 in the distance, but I'm focused on the Type 95. Someone else has shot him, so he's a one-hit kill. So we're going to flank in a heavy tank. A <laughs> super heavy tank. We're flanking. And we're just going to move up on this KB-85 while he's completely tunnel visioned. Nothing other than a KB-1 in town to worry about, so we're being capped. So we get a nice shot in, get a high roll, and he gets set on fire and taken out. So, yeah, only one kill so far, but we've done 900 damage. I believe we've only fired three times, we've done 900 damage. But KB-1 gets taken out. We're being capped, but we've got lots of tanks back towards cap. And we're advancing. So again, a KV-2 completely oblivious. Move up. And 312. Slightly above average roll. So get one shot in. Now I know the KV-2 is fired. So it's a question of who's going to reload first. And I reckon I am. But we get a shot in. We get a low roll. And someone else takes him out. So we're up to 1500 damage. And again, I'm not playing with any skill here. Um... It turns out that uh, all our defenders in the north are dead apart from RT and a KV-85. Now unfortunately, as you can see, the signal range on the OI Experimental is not great, so we're losing contact with what's happening on the other side. But uh, we know there's a Skoda T-25 back there and a KV-85 dealing with a Cromwell. We're continuing to advance. RT hits me, takes out my uh, turret and takes out my observation device with one hit. 156 damage done from a tier 4 RT and now an M37 hits me. So again, he shot me, he has to be up in these bushes. I'm wondering where exactly he is, is he moving? I will go for a shot and we'll blind kill him. <laughs> so, complete blind kill on the M37. So that's two RT down. And uh, just moving forward, four tanks on the enemy team, we're winning. So Bishop and ELC were spotted in the middle. Now the thing I'm a little bit worried about is that ELC has the potential to win this game for the enemy team. If he uh, uses his spotting, oh, Stug, and he's firing premium ammo. So a little bit tunnel vision, didn't spot the Stug. He pens me. I'm trying to stay safe from the Bishop, so... With that Skoda T25 on the enemy team, I thought we were going to be capped. That's why I decided to maybe cap was the best idea. Until, until we suddenly started winning 12-10. So, again, a little bit hesitant. Yeah, I should have been a little bit more decisive here. I would have had a shot in the Bishop earlier, but... Uh, Auto-aimed on the Bishop to get as much gun depression as I can. Take off the auto-aim. Aim, shoot, one-hit kill, 300 millimeters, high roll. So uh, that's a Pascucci's medal. I've taken out all three enemy RT. Now once again, being a little bit indecisive here. But there are only two tanks left on the enemy team, so I advance until they're in view range. The ELC goes down. Not much to shoot at the A43, but... Yes, yeah. <laughs> Murphy's Law. At extreme distance, we managed to land a shot with an incredibly inaccurate gun. He gets taken out. Uh, we tracked him, got a little bit of assistance damage, but yeah. Five kills, 2.4k damage, and first ace in the OI experimental. So it's hard to say what I feel about this tank. I think when it gets top tier in a tier 5 game, this tank can be very, very strong. And when it doesn't get top tier, it's in a tier 6 game, tier 
a uh, seven game it can be taken out very very easily um the gun is very very derpy even though it's not a derp gun it feels like a derp gun sometimes high alpha but long aim time and the accuracy is not great but um yeah i i, I as i say a little bit split on what to think about this tank i think it can be good and i think it can be terrible and as a result i ended up selling it and buying the tier six moving on to the oi which actually did exist as i say there's absolutely no information about this tank ever so I think maybe it's a wargaming invention but uh, we picked up our ace we also picked up a hand of god which I don't remember seeing very often survive and win the battle having received damage from at least four different enemy vehicles uh, we picked up a scoochies medal in a super heavy tank <laughs> I've been trying to pick up a scoochies medal for the T-55A mission and a medium tank forever I can't do it but I seem to be able to do it in the OI experimental I uh, also picked up high caliber uh, tier 5 tier 6 game not too bad uh, so uh, we ended up doing 2.6k damage, 5 kills, 1345 XP, not too shabby. Um, as I say, I've had a lot of good games in this tank, had a lot of terrible games in this tank. It wasn't worth keeping, but happy with that. Uh, fired 10, hit 10, pen 10, which is unusual for this gun, especially as a couple of those shots were fired at extreme distance. But um, happy with the damage, of course. Uh, 2 spotted, 9 damage, uh, 5 destroyed, did 541 assistance damage, not too much assistance damage, and earned 50 thousand credits uh with a premium account on a uh tier 5 regular in-game tank so uh, not a bad money maker i think tier 5 and tier 6 are the best tiers for making money if you don't have any premium tanks so not a bad little money maker the ammo costs are quite cheap compared to the uh alpha damage you can do uh it wasn't first game of the day again it was one of these tanks i sat down to try and get an ace in and we managed it so uh 2017 xp with a premium account overall um yeah oh experimental um i again i liked this tank and i hated this tank and it differed from game to game so not consistent enough for me to bother keeping it but uh we've moved on to tier 9 now i just need to uh free xp about eleven thousand xp to get the final gun but everything else is unlocked for it um, and then hopefully we'll continue up the Japanese, uh, let's say, illusionary or imaginary line. Because even though some information is available, um, a lot of that information seems to have absolutely no sources. But um, uh, I'll talk more about that when it comes to Tier 6. Uh, anyhow, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.